Hey everybody, there's a cool new feature in NativeScript 4.1 called Gradients. We've been waiting for this for a long time and now it's finally here. So I wanna show you how to do Gradients and what are some of the limitations that you cannot do just yet in version 4.1. All right, let's get to it. Let's create a NativeScript core application as a test here and it's gonna be a TypeScript app. Let's go to that directory, Gradient Test, and I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio Code for editing. Let's take a look at this application. We're looking at NativeScript version 4.1. So we got TNS core modules 4.1. By the way, just to show you, I also have NativeScript version 4.1 of the CLI installed, and there it is. And I might as well go ahead and kick off this application. Let's start with iOS first. So it's running in the background while I'm editing, and it's updating the app in real time on the device. Let's go over to our main page markup here. And I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit here. There's some comments there that we don't need at this moment. So we're talking about being able to add the new gradients to our applications, which is a really neat little feature that we can do. What can we apply gradients to? Well, let's go ahead and try applying it to this stack layout here. So I'm gonna add a new class to the stack layout and I'm gonna call it bottom gradient. We need to define this. So let's go to our CSS. I'm gonna clean up these comments as well. And over here, I'm gonna define bottom gradient. Let's save that. Let me show you what this app looks like right now. So this is your typical Hello World page. And we have a white background. Let's go ahead and add a linear gradient here. Now to define a gradient, you need to set the background. Not background color, background. And the only types of gradients that are supported right now is a version 4.1 in NativeScript are linear gradients. There's different ways you can specify linear gradients and we'll get into that shortly. I'll show you some examples of different types of linear gradient definitions, but this is the simplest way. You can specify linear gradient, which looks like a function call. So here you're saying going to bottom. So in other words, from top to bottom, and these are your color stops, orange, red, green, blue, and light blue. Once I save this file, let's take a look at what we have. There's the stack layout in the background and we're going from orange to green to blue to light blue. Let's say we want this going to top instead. Well, it'll just flip over. It's gonna go from bottom to top, and it's gonna have the order that you've specified here. You can also do side to side. Here, we're going to left from right. The idea is the same. Okay, so that's specifying direction. What if you wanted this gradient to be a little bit slanted? Well, you can specify degrees. So instead of two left, for example, you, you can specify uh, 45 degrees, and now your gradient will be tilted at 45 degrees. Although to me, that doesn't look like 45 degrees, but that's a different point. Can we apply this gradient to something other than the stack layout? Let's go ahead and remove it from here, and let's take a look at applying it to this label. So I'm gonna apply that same class to this label here, and there we go. You can see that I've applied this gradient to the label, but now we don't see the text. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's see if we can apply it to this button. I'm gonna apply that class to the button, and there we go. There's our gradient on the button. We can still tap. We're not gonna get the button active class applied, but you get the native iOS dimming of the actual text for a button. And finally, I wanna try this effect on the action bar of the page. So let's go to the action bar, apply the gradient, and it looks like we cannot get this effect on the action bar itself. However, there's a workaround for that. You can always create a custom layout inside your action bar definition, and let's say we have a label here. I'm just gonna borrow this label and set the text property as my app, and let's just bring the gradient class down to the stack layout inside the action bar, and let's see what that looks like. And there we go. You can see that you can work with gradients in the action bar, you just have to be clever about it. All right, how about Android? I'm gonna open up a new tab and run this in Android to see what we get. Now we have Android running here. Let's bring these side by side so we can compare. Okay, so we do have some parity here. This is pretty good. They're looking pretty close. The tilt of the Android one is slightly different than the tilt of the iOS one. I'm not quite sure why that is, but both gradients are there. And I'm sure if our gradient didn't have a degree value in it, 
let's say it had two bottom, then we'll see that they do look alike. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this gradient back down here to our main stack layout so we can play around with it some more. And let's just take a quick peek of what that looks like. So we are getting the gradient and it looks pretty good on both of these. Now, this is a pretty ugly gradient. There are websites out there that will make you really nice, good looking CSS linear gradients and you can use those. I'm gonna show you an example of one of these and how its generated CSS can be used. This site is called cssgradient.io. This will let you tweak these gradients and set your color stops at different locations. By the way, your color stop is the percentage of where you want the color to transition. So for example, if the color stops are far away from each other, then the gradient will be smoother. If they're closer to each other, then the gradient will be sudden. And I wanted to show you what that looks like. So here is an example of a gradient where we have a burgundy background here, and then it's going from a dark to a light blue. And in order to get this code, you go down here, and we can just copy this background out right here. Notice that we are using degrees here, and we're using RGBA values and uh, the percentages, the percentages of the stops. Let's go back here to our CSS. And I'm gonna replace this whole line with that background definition. And let's go take a look. Okay, so we see here that we do have a gradient. It's looking quite similar, except on Android, we have this mysterious white line. That might just be because of my resolution. If I adjust this a little bit, let's see if that helps it a little bit. No, no, it doesn't. We still have a little bit of a line there. It could be because of the emulator. Let's take a look at another example. I'm gonna add a couple more stops here and make them a little bit more pronounced like that. Let's go ahead and copy this code. You can see the code is a little bit longer because we have more stop values. So I'm gonna paste this in here and there we go. You can see the transitions are a bit smoother because the gradient stops are not right on top of each other. Now, you might have some questions here. One of the types of uh, gradients you can do is a radial gradient, and there's other types, and a radial gradient looks like this. You cannot do a radial gradient yet with native script. Hopefully that's coming sometime soon, but you can't as of right now, version 4.1. Another question you might have is, can you animate gradients? Animating gradients is something you can do on the web, but you cannot do it just yet in native script as a version 4.1. I really want this feature and I hope that that's gonna come soon. And the NativeScript team has really been doing a great job in adding these kinds of features to the framework. So there's gradients for you. It's a really cool feature. Go play around with it. All right, thanks for watching this video. There's definitely gonna be more on the way. So go ahead and subscribe to this channel where I will post videos like this one and also select lessons from the official native scripting video school where we have free and premium native script related courses. And that's on nativescripting.com. All right, thanks for watching. This is Alex Ziskind, until next time.